Hey everybody, happy Monday morning. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. This is week 40 something, 43, I don't know. Got me a big ass Starbucks coffee. I didn't film anything over the weekend because it was strictly work. I know I sound super repetitive, but I'm just like, oh, I was working. I had my head in my computer for probably 36 hours, minus eight hours of sleep. I always send out my monthly reports to my clients, fifth day of the month. Last week on Friday was January 5th. I take all the reports, all the campaigns that I've been running from the month prior. So this is January 5th. I put a report together of all of December and I send it to my clients. With that, it gives me an overview of everything. You know, how much I spent, cost per click, conversions, purchases, all that kind of stuff. So it gives me an idea of what's working well, what hasn't worked well at all. So along with me sending the reports, that usually means I need to tweak a lot of things or come up with new ideas. So that's what I had to do over the weekend because the fifth fell on a Friday, I was sending out the reports. So I had a lot of things to work on over the weekend. So I didn't even go out this weekend. And today's Monday, it's Monday morning. Uh, I think it's like 1130. Yeah, I didn't sleep a lot this weekend. So today I slept until like 10 o'clock. It was amazing. And now I'm waiting for the real estate company to shoot me a message back because I believe we're kicking off the campaign today, or at least we're going to start to get things rolling. And as I said before, basically a competition. They hired two people, myself and another Facebook ad person. For the next six weeks, they're giving us $1,000 in ad spend. It's going to be measured on three things, cost per click, cost per lead, registration for the webinar, and uh, just who they want to work with more. And I think I cater to that third part a lot, well, a lot better, not a lot better than the other two, but I think I, I can win that. I, that's an advantage for me because because a lot of my job is self-education and I'm always learning throughout the day and they as clients don't know as much as I do in the Facebook realm. So if I kind of explain the process to them and I, it's almost like I'm acting as a consultant along with what I do Facebook wise for the businesses because a lot of them aren't in this space so they don't know what works well. So, you know, if I'm explaining to them like we want to run blog posts to your website, we want to run these kind of video ads and I, I'm able to break it down to them and tell them simply why, like why this is working, why that's where the market is and stuff that helps them outside of just having a Facebook ad guy, right? That's something that they can keep with them and, and when they're working, even if it's not with me, with another person, that's information I can provide. And when they're saying they wanna figure out someone they could work with, that's what they mean. They want someone that they could bounce ideas off of, that they could learn from. I'm waiting on follow, that's where we're at right now. What do we got planned for the week? Every week I basically start off by writing a to-do list and I put it right on the wall where I'm working, up there, tape it on there for the week and I'll just cross things off as I go. Right now I only have kick off the campaign, the one I was just talking about, film and edit, top free agency, video that's a fantasy video film edit publish week 43 this video because I do that every Saturday but I have it done by Thursday and then gym at least and I put like one two three four five I'll cross it out as the days go by so I'll just write things that I need to do on the list as they go on so every morning if you don't know what you're doing right you're gonna get on your computer and you're gonna start going on social media you're gonna start checking all your stupid emails and stuff like that so if you have a to-do list you have things that you know you need to do right I just look right next to me bam I'm gonna be like all right let's get started on number one for a while I was writing down like a daily to-do list I would end up writing like a 12 number list of things that I needed to get done. And that really wasn't helpful because you start checking off all the shit that like isn't really that important, but you you feel good about it. You're like, oh, I got like nine out of 12 things done, but you didn't do any of the things that you needed to do, right? But that was really actually important. So I started doing like a weekly list of stuff. So that way it's more like, you don't get stressed when you look at a list of like 15 things to do and be like, oh, I need to get it all done by the end of the day. Now I'm just rambling. Anyways, welcome to the video and that's it. So it's Thursday, January 11th, last day of the vlog. I'm about to hit the gym and probably film a workout for you guys because I haven't done that in a while. I just wanted to check in. These last, probably from Friday, whenever the last vlog ended off until today, is the most I've ever worked in a five to six day period. I'm probably working 12 to 14 hours a day. And it's crazy considering I'm doing really nothing fantasy football wise. So this is all marketing and things are starting to go very well. One thing I wanted to share with you guys that I'm doing. So I came across this, Insta when I was out in California, I came across this Instagram account, actually kind of a funny story. I might as well open up and tell you guys. So when I got out to California, I downloaded the Bumble app. You'll know what that is. And I matched with this girl, cute blonde girl out there, and we were talking or whatever, and I went to her profile, and I see that she's like, I don't know, she was doing something on her story with like this fitness company called Move You. Now I, I go to Move You, I go to their profile to see what they're doing, and they have like 400,000 followers. And this girl is like helping them. They do these videos, these awesome content videos, 
and she draws on with like a marker, a sharpie, like the muscles on the person's body that's demonstrating. Anyway, she's very artistic. And I go on this page and I start following the page and the content and the information and like their entertainment is amazing. And I'm like, this is like something I've never, ever, ever seen before on social media. They are going to be the next wave of fitness for the next 10 years. They're all about posture, all about making sure that your body is aligned and they know their shit. They're like two young kids, like probably a few years older than me, maybe like 28, one of them and the other one's 30, 30. 35. I think when I started following them a couple months ago when I was in California, they had maybe 300,000 followers. They're already up to 450,000 followers. I'm looking around their website and I'm looking at stuff, right? For my own personal use, I'm like, maybe I'm going to buy their course because I would love to start using what they use, what they sell, because the content that they give out, they do a lot of it like I do, right? The way they give out so much free content, so much free value that by the time they want to sell a product to you, you're like, wow, like these guys know their shit. They're an expert in their field. I'm not calling myself an expert, but like fantasy football wise, you position yourself to know a lot so by the time you want to sell a product everyone that follows you your audience is like yeah of course I'll buy it if it's five dollars yeah sure why not if it's twenty dollars okay it's gonna be worth it right so that's what they're doing and I'm like I know this sales funnel the client I just started working with the real estate company their sales funnel is very similar right we're running traffic to a webinar page people sign up for a webinar it's a free webinar they sign up for the free webinar and in the webinar is when the company makes their pitch this is the exact same sales funnel that this fitness company, Move You, is doing. I go on their website, I see they don't have a Facebook pixel on there, meaning they're not running any sponsored ads. They don't run Facebook or Instagram, which is a travesty giving the huge audience they have. And I literally think if I started running with their campaigns, I could 10x, maybe even 20x their business. So I reached out to them, and I don't wanna, maybe if I get on a phone call with them, then I can kind of drop that little fun bumble fact for them. But So I emailed them this morning, and I got a, like a, an auto response from their customer service team. So I don't know if it's more than two guys or if it's they actually have a whole customer service team, but I emailed them, I hit them through Instagram DMs, I hit them through Twitter DMs, and I Facebook messaged their page. I really, 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 really wanna hop on a call with them because I think this would be like the perfect client. And they're probably killing it with the webinar sales funnel that they do organically. They don't, they don't even need paid traffic, but I really think I could 10X their business if they let me work with them. So I, I wrote them a long personalized email. Hopefully they open it, hopefully they read it. I'm sure they get so much interaction throughout the day between emails, DMs, all this stuff. So I'm gonna keep trying. I will email them, D DM them, message them, every single day for the next month until I get a reply or until they hop on a phone call with me because I will be able to sell them and I guarantee you I can work with them if they just talk to me. That's where I'm at with that. Since I'm in the, you know, I'm hyped up, I'm in the fitness mood, I'm gonna go hit the gym. I, I literally, cause I've been working so much, I have not gone to the gym this entire week. And also, I got these shades, right? This kid on Facebook that I'm friends with was like, I don't know, he's weird, he puts a lot of weird posts on, but he, he said something interesting. He was like, if you're having trouble sleeping or if you think you're staring at screens all day and that's why you get headaches or something, you have to try these out. I'm like, what is this shit? Because that literally Really pertain to me. I was like, you could be a marketer, to be honest with you. These are called blue blocker sunglasses, right? I stare at that fucking screen for 12 hours a day, and by the end of the day, my eyes are dripping with like whatever juice is inside my coming out of that shit by that point. So I went on Amazon and I, I typed in blue blocker sunglasses. They're like 12 bucks, right? And they have a weird orange tint, obviously, because that's that's what takes away. They call them like the blue rays that come off your, your phone screen, your laptop screen. So you know how they say like you're not supposed to look at screens before you go to sleep, right? It's really bad and it'll keep you up at night. And I noticed that I don't sleep, well, no, I don't not sleep well at night, but there are nights when I don't sleep well and I know it's because I've been looking at screens all day. Like I don't have enough stress in my life that that's what keeps me up at night because I can feel it in my eyes and like my head that it's these screens that I'm staring at all day. So I've got these blue blocker sunglasses from Amazon. They were like 12 bucks, 13 bucks. I could stare at the screen all day, right? I could do my work all day and not have any side effects in my eyes and feel perfectly fine when I go to sleep at night. So for anyone that has trouble falling asleep because they think they stare at screens all day, or even if you just work at a computer all day and you're looking at the screens, these are definitely very, very, very good for you. I'm pretty sure our whole generation is gonna get cancer because we just stare at screens all fucking day. I'm on the computer all day. When I'm not on the computer, I'm looking at my phone. When I'm not on either of those things, I'm in bed, I'm probably watching TV or something. That shit cannot be good for you. I'll put the link in the description, in the video description. Let's hit the goddamn jump. All right, so I'm gonna give you a little walkthrough. Tell you about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, why y'all should be doing it, how I'm doing it, all the who's, what's, when's, where's, why's, how's, hoes, all that good stuff. So. I always start my workouts with a little warm up, something to get the blood flowing. My favorite cardio thing is uh, is just a jump rope. 
so you see me kind of working back and forth on my toes, jumping around. You could do it on the treadmill though, you could walk, you could run, you can get on the elliptical, anything to kind of get the, uh, the blood flowing, especially when it's cold out like it is in Jersey and it's like 14 degrees before you walk into the gym. Sometimes I'll go and sit in the sauna, just like warm my body up and then I'll get the cardio involved. But yeah, jump rope is my favorite thing in the world. I've been focusing a lot more on core lately because I realize like I have some some of the, my body parts that are weaker, right, are like my shoulders, like my delts, my core and things like that. So I try to involve those into like all my workouts. Now this is like an exercise that I uh, actually got from a physical therapist. So someone I was seeing for PT because my lower back was kind of messed up. So he gave me this, this is like a core movement or an ab movement that you could do with a bad lower back. So what you do is you need a yoga mat and you need a pair of the, um, the elastic ropes or wires or whatever and somewhere to, to wrap them around. It doesn't need to be like a nail or like a hook like it is on the wall you see there. It could be anything like a, 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 bell, like a bar that you see in the background there. Um, yeah, I'll get back into it once I'm done with the jump roping, but you're supposed to line it up so that the yoga mat's lined up with the, uh, with the elastic wires and what you do each time is you take a big breath in so that your stomach is as big as it could possibly get and you want your back as flat against the ground as it could possibly get. So that way you're not lifting off the ground, you're not in like a, a position where it's like that because that's really bad for your back when you're doing core movements. And some people like, for a while, I can't do a lot of like extreme ab, ab movements, right? Because it hurts my lower back. So you have to be able to figure out ways to strengthen those muscles. And the reason your lower back hurts is because you probably have weak, uh, weak parts around your body otherwise, you know? So your abs might be really weak. So you strengthen those and your lower back won't hurt as much. So like I said before, what you do is you want to take the elastic ropes. You want to take a big breath in so that your back is completely flat against the ground. Once you do that, you take the ropes, you squeeze your chest and you bring them down to your side. And then from there, depending on what level of like comfortability you have and what level of like ab strength you have, you could do different things with your legs. You see here, I'm doing the bicycle kicks. You can go up and over. Um, but when I first started out, what I wanted to do was um, you do one foot at a time. So you, you get your, your, your back nice and flat on the ground. You bring the things down and then you go one foot up, one foot down like that and boom you'll you'll see it if you bring if you have your core squeezing the entire time you'll feel like a really really good workout in your abs and uh, that's something that won't hurt your lower back as long as you make sure to remember to keep your back flat on the flat on the floor and you'll see it here right I take a big breath and my back is completely flat against the ground you don't want to have a little curve underneath there so you bring them down and then whatever you could do you bring your legs up you can put them out you can leave them out there for 30 seconds you could do bicycles you could do one leg up at a time Whatever you're comfortable with is what you could do, right? And and th that'll strengthen eventually, and you'll be able to do more and more with it. But uh, these are like my warm-ups, right? Like I do it with my core. I do jump rope. So I basically supersetted those two things one time at another to kill two birds with one stone. And as I said, so so I started to get into like a weight movement. Basically, this That's is going to be like a chest, shoulders, um, push kind of day for me. So before I start any like bench press or anything, I always want to warm up your shoulders. You want to warm up your rotator cuffs because a lot of people have problems with their shoulders when they're benching and it's usually because they don't warm up properly. Sorry, I'm holding my nuts right there. They don't warm up properly, right? Or they have deficiencies elsewhere. So I always want to warm up my rotator cuffs. I'll basically put these, this on a cable rope. I'll put the weight as light as it possibly can go. I'll make sure that my shoulders are braced backwards, right? You want to go up, back and down so that your shoulder blades are pinching together and that's anytime you're doing a chest movement anytime you're doing a shoulder movement you want to make sure you have your shoulder blades pinched back together so I'll go um, you know like 10 reps to the left side 10 reps to the right side 10 10 reps, uh, reps on the on the left side going forward and then the same thing with the right that way you're warming up all your your shoulder um, your shoulder muscles and the tendons and everything there so that by the time you are getting on the bench and you're putting up heavy weight, right, they'll be warmed up and they'll be ready to go, which is what you'll see right about, um, get my ass off the screen, meow. So there's some heavy ass weight I'm pushing right now, right? We're getting on the incline bench press because that's like a, a part of my body that I'm trying to build up or a part that I'd like to have more muscle on, right? We got DJ Khaled, we the best in the background. He's giving me some motivation because I know he's like the sponsor for Weight Watchers now. He's down 20 pounds apparently. It looks like he's up about 30 pounds, but that's neither here nor there. Um, with the incline bench press, what I try to do is, because it's very hard to, and you'll see in one of the exercises I do later that I'll explain it more, it's hard to hit the incline bench press because you really, really have to focus on hitting those muscles, right? This is a muscle that like you really need 
but they, they call it a mind muscle connection, right? You really gotta be thinking about squeezing that muscle when you're doing it. So I'll put my hands pretty far apart. They're farther than shoulder width apart. You wanna have actually a little, little arch in your lower back there so that you can get more of an angle because if, if you're too high up, you're just working your front delts. Your, the shoulders are working more than your upper chest. If you're too low, if you're flat, obviously you're working the entire pec and not the pec on top. I forget what the muscle's even called. To be honest with you, I'm not a physical trainer. I'm not a fucking doctor. I'm not a therapist. I am just a f guy who likes to work out. I'm trying to teach you what I do, what I fucked up before, and what I want to do moving forward. So listen up, Big Dog Nation. So as you can see, I'm just working my weight up, and I start with a very low weight, and I eventually, my chest takes a while to warm up, as you can see. I started with just a bar, moved over to 25 pounds on each side, 45 pounds, 60 pounds on each side, and you eventually work your way up. You always want to keep your shoulder blades pinned back. You want to keep, you know, the uh, if you're doing incline, you want to make sure the bar comes down at an incline there. And then when you push up, make sure you're at the top, you're really squeezing. Like I said, the mind muscle squeeze is really what's going to build up that muscle. And then I moved over to some shoulder exercises. Again, I warmed up with these, but these are ones that I do with a little heavier weight to build up because, you know, like you can build up a chest, you can build up your arms and whatever, but it all looks a little funky if you don't have deltoids, right? Your delts, these shoulder blades are what makes you look kind of aesthetic, right? You want those round, like bowling ball kind of delts going on the right side here. So these are an exercise that you could really build them up in. If you make sure you go lightweight, you focus on what you're doing, you really build that mind muscle connection. So I'm actually on an elevated surface right now to get more uh, tension. You can see when I bring it back, right? I want to bring it back at least to my leg, if not farther, because that gives you more tension on the shoulder. And here you can see me at like a wide ankle, but I like to hit when I'm doing these, I don't like to bring it forward. Like I don't like if I'm going side, I don't want it to be exactly parallel perpendicular. I like to have my shoulder blades pinned back and then do it a little farther back. So you're hitting the back deltoid as well. So it's like the entire thing. But if you're going from here, all you're hitting is like the front and a little bit of the side, but not the back. If you go with a little bit like that way, you're going to be hitting the entire shoulder blade there. So I do a bunch of sets of this. Um, like I said, keep it super lightweight. Make sure you're keeping the tension on your shoulder. When you're coming down, you can come down to about your leg. You can even go backwards a little more. Like you see where my hand hits my ass, it can go even behind the ass more to give you more resistance. Um, so that way you don't have to put like 30 pounds on and fuck your shoulders up. But I did probably maybe three or four sets of this, uh, which is a lot of volume because you're doing the side and then you're doing the front raises as well. I would suggest, well for me, I think my, the front of my shoulders are probably a little weaker than the side or the back. So I'll do like, I don't know, like 20 pounds on the side lat raises. And then when I switch to the front ones, I probably, I probably uh, knock it down five pounds on each side. But the key thing here is just making sure that your shoulder blades are pinched back and together so that you're stressing the right muscles when you do the workout. And if you have any questions about this, or if you have like, if you need a workout plan or anything, just leave a comment down below and I'll help you out as much as I can. That's what I'm here for. Um, a little more shoulder action. This is what they call the Arnold press. Arnold Schwarzenegger, this is like named after him. It's basically a sitting shoulder press, like a military press that you would normally do with dumbbells. But the thing here is when you come down, you come down to your sides and then you twist the weights over here, right? If it's facing this way, if your palms are facing out, you want them to end up facing towards your face. And then you twist them back out and then push it up. A lot of people come down and they're they're already twisting it inside towards your face before they even come down. What you want to do is come all the way down, then twist them in, then push them together, and then do the same thing back because that's when you're going to get the real burn and that's when the shoulder really works the muscle there. So I keep it lightweight there because, again, I don't, I don't want to kill myself on the heaviness. I want to make sure the form is perfect. Now, this is the big one that I want to really get across here. When I'm trying to do incline, right, again, it's hard to hit the incline. It's hard to focus on that. I found that ISO movements, when you when you take these machines and you do them one arm at a time, it's so much more effective in targeting the muscle that you're working out. It could be the flies, it could be a machine press, like a bench press on a machine. But what I found is instead of, shoot, instead of sitting straight, right? When you're sitting straight and you try to do flies, you can only hit here. You can only squeeze the chest muscle so much. So what I do is I sit on these machines and I basically sit at like a 30 degree angle. That way your arm can come all the way back but more importantly, when you're coming this way with, with the weights, right, you see me at like a 45, 35 degree angle, you can squeeze it like your arm can come so much farther forward than as if um, if you were just sitting straight. And you could, and this has been like so 
big in terms of like being able to build my chest and being able to build my upper pec here. So I highly, 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 highly suggest, I just started doing these a couple months ago, but if you have a chest routine or chest workout and you're looking to build your incline, do this on the chest press or do this on flies. Just sit at a 30 degree angle and, and keep your arm on your, in, uh, on your upper chest. And when you come across, you'll be able to feel the squeeze like really, really, really hard. And it, it's gonna help build that muscles up. It'll break it down very hard. I hope that made sense to you guys. But um, yeah, this is like the end of my workout. We got cute girls on the bike trying to just watching me. You know what it is. And uh, I like to do a lot of body weight movements. And again, I want to end with some more core work. So I'll do push ups. I'll do like eight regular push ups. And I'll keep my, I'll take my legs off the ground. Yeah, me just looking fly. Anyways, to finish that, yeah, I was doing push ups and I'll do eight regular, then I'll take one foot off the ground and I'll do eight push ups with the one foot in the air. That really, really, really works your core. And then when I'm done with the eight, I'll switch legs, do eight more, and then I'll put both legs back on the ground, do eight regular push ups, and that will conclude it, right? So I hit multiple chest exercises, I did cardio to warm up with, I did core, I did core involved with the chest, we hit shoulders, we hit all these things, so I'll probably hit leg. I'm actually about to go to the gym now. It's the next day, but I'm about to go to the gym now. And I got an email back from the Move You company, by the way anyone was following along they they Facebook messaged me back they said thanks for reaching out we're confirming that we've received your email and we will be reaching out to you shortly within the coming days so they got my message they didn't read my Instagram DM which I was pissed about but that's that good things coming in in the coming week hopefully so tune in next week to find out what happens with move you because I'm super excited if I could hook them on as a client man man big dogs are taking oh that's gonna wrap up the video click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video if you have any questions any complaints you want to talk shit whatever you want to do leave a comment down below subscribe to the channel if you are new and we'll be back next saturday as always so peace enjoy your weekend